Hello, hello, we are back to getting started with Monarch Money. This video series is to help you step-by-step -step set up your Monarch Money so that you can be set up for success in managing a budget or managing your cash flow through this app. So you should have watched part one of this series and then you should have watched the, mo the video about categorizing your transactions. And then you should be watching this one. This is the third video, part two of the third video. I don't know, it's a disaster, but uh, this is the next step. So part one was uh, putting adding all of your accounts to Monarch Money. That's pretty much the, the step you have to take when you set up Monarch Money for the first time. Part two is categorizing your transactions. And this is now part three or step three of the process of setting up your Monarch. So let's dive into it. But first, uh, if you have any questions about what's going on, if you are wanting some more help with setting up your uh, Monarch money, I have a lot of different services that I offer, including just jumping on Zoom calls to do Q&A sessions, uh, either one-on-one -on -one or uh, in as, as a kind of like an office hour situation. So if you are interested in this, please make sure you use the, uh, the link below to go to my website and sign up for the email newsletter. That's how I give, provide announcements for the different services that I'm providing and getting the updates on how to get help and, uh, you know, personal one-on-one -on -one help uh, with your Monarch setup. So uh, please make sure you do that and let's dive into it. So your next step after you've connected your accounts, categorized your, uh, set up your categories, you have designed your categories, you've created the perfect groups, the perfect categories. Now you're going to go in and start uh, cleaning up your Monarch, cleaning up the transactions and getting them to match those new the new categories that you've created the new and putting them in the groups you've created and all that. So I suggest going into your transaction page, just first thing, that's where we're gonna go. It's a big list of a massive, a lot of transactions and it looks really messy, but we are going to start categorizing things. Now, the crucial thing to know is this concept of setting up rules because it's gonna make your life a million times easier as you set up your categories. So the first thing is you're gonna scroll through here and we're gonna find things that don't quite look right. We're like, hey, that's not where I want uh, fitness or maybe that is. So Verizon, I, this is a, phone expense. This is not miscellaneous. For some reason that's showing up as a, as a phone expense. So we're going to click on it. We're going to go ahead and change it to the phone expenses. Now this pop-up is going to come up and you got to click on it really fast. It's going to go away. You got to click on it really fast. And you should do this every single time you have a transaction for the most part, unless it really is just a one-off thing. Um, but now we're going to say if it, uh, this automatically creates the rule that if it uh, matches that merchant name, so Verizon was the merchant name, if it matches this, then it will change it to this category that I just updated. You could just leave it that. You can press apply to all. And then you do not have to go through a million transactions to change every single one of these. And so for some people, this is hundreds, depending on how many uh, transactions came in when you connected your bank account. So please make sure that you click this so that you don't have so much to do when we're cleaning up your Monarch. So we clicked it, we're gonna press save. Awesome, we just changed 11 categories in this situation. Uh, so we're going to keep going down the list um, to find things that don't look right. And when it doesn't look right, we're going to change it. Exxon, this is um, like vehicle gas, not my gas electricity bill. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to change it to vehicle gas. And I'm going to create a roll. You got to click on it really fast, that little pop-up that comes up. <laughs> and now, same thing, you could leave it at that. Now, for some people, you might want to add a little bit more depth. Uh, let's say that you often go here for gas, but you also go there to get your uh, morning pick-me-up for an energy drink or some snacks before the baseball game, you know, whatever. Um, but normally, it's uh, when you go to a gas station and you spend less than, let's say, $15, it's not normally for gas. It's probably for uh, some kind of snack, right? And so you can actually set up the amount so that if the expense is greater than, and sorry, let me get rid of my face here. If the expense is greater than, uh, let's say $15, then we know that this is indeed for gas. 
when you now run up to uh, one of these charges and if it was less than $15, you want to set the same rule, but you'd say less than, right? Less than $15 and you'd want it to be towards restaurants or dining out or whatever you call this category. Uh, so you can kind of set that up however you want. In this case, there are only that's there's there are none that are less than 15. So I'm going to put this back to greater than. We're going to make this one. This in this case is just gas, and I'm going to make sure that I apply to all 20 transactions. So that helps me speed up my cleanup. It makes uh, so you only have to really go through one month to find all your bills and get a general idea of where things should go. Um, the stuff that comes after that, after a month of going through your transactions can be found fairly easily in a different process. So you are not going to scroll through this forever trying to figure out, um, you know, you, it's not going to take that long to even get a whole year's worth of data um, correct in Monarch. And so we're going to keep scrolling. See if there's anything else that we can find. Um, here's an example of another one. So Spotify, maybe I've created a subscription category. I don't want that in entertainment. I want that in subscription. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hurry and click on create rule really fast. <laughs> it stays there for a little bit. Don't you, know, you don't need to panic. Um, but I just want to point out a couple other things here. So we have the merchant name that's turned on. So it's saying if it matches Spotify, but sometimes you have things like a, like a Zelle, Zelle comes through. Um, and so maybe you need to set up uh, an additional uh, rule here. So it's if it says Spotify or if it says, let's say Zelle, um, and it is equal to, let's say you pay a housekeeper or you pay um, for tutoring for your kids or something, I don't know. Uh, you uh, have a Zelle expense that's re fairly regularly $150. You can set this up so that it always shows up as lawn care or, you know, again, whatever you need it to be. Um, you can also say, you know, if the category comes in a certain way, you can make a rule about it. If the um, uh, if it comes into a specific account, this is also really crucial. Um, uh, if it comes into a specific account, let's say like if it comes in through your mortgage, if there's transactions in your mortgage, if your mortgage account is pulling transactions, so it's like showing you the receiving payment, um, it's saying, hey, we received the mortgage and it's splitting it up maybe in your property taxes and stuff. It's green. It's normally a green um, uh, amount. You want to mark those as transfers. So we'd want to turn off all this, right? Because it's really just, if it comes in as the mortgage, we don't need this to show up in the budget. We don't need mortgage transactions. Uh, so you can either choose to uh, hide them, but I would prefer actually in, more than that is just to label them as transfers. The transfers don't show up in your budget. They are neither an income category or an expense category. So they do not show up in your cash flow report, which is purely to show you income minus expenses. It's kind Kind of the same thing as hiding an expense but you can do either one there's no need to do both they do the same thing um, so uh, that's one example of some rules you can set up like you can also set up uh, you know if it comes from your partner's checking account let's say it's an expense that came from their checking account you're not budgeting you, know, you have your separate finances uh, you can update the category to their section maybe it's you know, always know it's going to be for their business and so you put it in one of their business expenses or under any categories that you've created just for them uh, there is that's a couple different use cases of setting up rules to help you so that you can one change a million things all at once because depending on how many transactions there are um, you know if we wanted to change everything in Melanie's checking to uh, let's say she just does all the shopping expenses let's say she buys all the groceries we could change um, a whole lot of transactions oops let's do that 156 transactions in Melanie's checking. We could just change all that right now. So you can see how this is really powerful to get your uh, Monarch cleaned up. It's more than just setting up rules for the future. It's also to help you uh, get your cash flow report cleaned up for the year. And I recommend doing this for at least two to three months worth of transactions. You can do it for the whole year if you're feeling ambitious, but at least two to three months so you can get an average, a uh, good idea of what average spend is for you. So when you do the next steps in this process, you're gonna know how to actually set up your budget, but the only way you can do that is if you have a good uh, average uh, or at least a good documentation of what your average spend has been. Even though you, if you know it's like, hey, we went on trip, I know the last month's expenses were way higher than usual, that's okay. We still want a good uh, look at what that, uh, that trend looks like.
So go ahead and keep scrolling through this for at least a month, maybe two months. I probably recommend at least two months. Keep scrolling through. Of course, uh, if you get the spinning wheel, um, go ahead and just refresh. But you'll keep scrolling through and changing the categories um, that need to be categorized, making rules for every single one if it's necessary. Of course, if it's a one-off thing, you don't need a rule for it. Don't don't do it. But um, for all your bills, find your bills, find your subscriptions, find those reoccurring things. Make sure they're in their proper category and the way you want to document them going forward. So once you do that for about two months, there's normally a lot that's cleaned up. You're probably like in the clear of what you need uh, in your um, in your situation here. The next thing you need to do is be really aware of your transfers. So uh, you might have missed them as you're scrolling through. So I want you to do a separate scroll through just clicking on transfers. I wanted you to press apply. And normally you're gonna have a whole bunch of these because when you pull in your accounts, there's gonna be a ton of them. But you just really need to make sure that the act they are actually transfers. Transfers are moving money between accounts that you own. And so if you see a trans if you see a Zelle come through and it's labeled as transfer, well, that's probably not a transfer. It probably went to someone. That's why you Zelled them. Or maybe it came in as a reimbursement from a friend. You need to make sure those get categorized. So don't leave transfers here. Um, if it is not an ex expense, so if it did not go out to someone else, if it did not come in from someone else is not income, then it's probably transfer. Um, but if it is going out to someone else, it, this is not talking about transfers to people. That's that's called an expense. This is just transfers between your accounts, between things you own, between. Um, so it's not, again, it's not going out, it's not going in. Just want to reiterate that a few times. Make sure your transfers are all categorized correctly. Now, what we're going to do is do another double check to see how things are looking. So we're going to go to your cash flow section. This is probably the easier one. I have a whole video on reports and that's where I spend most of my time, but this is the easier one to digest to start with. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to click on either month. You can do this monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Um, for sake of uh, time, I'd probably recommend doing quarterly just to see how this looks, but maybe it might be a little easier to digest monthly. So you can do it however you want, but I'm going to click on April because that was a full month. Um, so we're, you know, we're halfway through, uh, or most of the way through May already. So we're going to, uh, do that one. And so what we are looking for are, uh, things that just don't look right. If you're seeing an auto payment, you're like, I don't pay an auto payment. You should probably click on this and figure out what this is and maybe recategorize it. And, um, remember when you set up rules, it will clean all of it up all at once. So we're going to go back to cash flow because that is correct. We're going to keep going down. It's like, whoa, clothing is way too high. What did we do here? Click on it. See what happened. Maybe things are actually supposed to be labeled as gifts or special occasions. Um, keep going down that list until you uh, feel pretty good about everything. You don't have to go through every single one. Um, but that is just a step, kind of a step before setting up your budget is just kind of taking a look at where your expenses are going. And if it doesn't look right, click on it, maybe make, make some edits. If there's things that you're like, I don't need this category, there's nothing in this, then great, let's get rid of it. Uh, if the category is confusing, if you don't know what it means, if you're like, what is even shopping, maybe add some depth to it and rename it so it actually means something to you. Same with this one, like um, if you don't really know what this means, maybe you need to move it to like uh, something that's more specific specific to you like movie night or whatever it is for you. Okay, so that is the basic steps to getting uh, your monarch data to be in a place where you can actually start to create a budget. So that's your next homework item is going through cleaning up the data in Monarch. Categorize those transactions in the category that makes the most sense. Set up as many rules as you need to. Don't panic about setting up rules that you don't need or setting up uh, rules that uh, are a mistake or you know just, just create the rules. If the rule gets in the way, you will be able to find it. If you're noticing that a category is consistently going to, or a transaction is going consistently to the wrong category, we'll set up new rules, we'll edit the rules. There's no stress there. And just to show you too, if you do start to panic about a rule you created and you're like, whoa, I don't really want that, you can go into your settings, um, scroll down to rules. Of course, my head is in the way. Scroll down to your rules and you'll see all the rules you have set up. Uh, maybe if you forgot to accidentally uh, click the apply to all, uh, you can go ahead and still do that. It'll still show up right here if you created the rule and you're like, ah, I didn't apply it to all and I really wanted to. Um, but all of the rules are in here. You can scroll through them. You can create rules from right here if you don't uh, know how to find them. I suggest not doing that because the merchant name needs to be exact. And so I suggest creating the rules directly from the transaction. So when you change it and 
that little pop-up comes up. Um, but if you have rules regarding like a specific account, that's where you're gonna go make that, is go into settings, rules, and maybe I'm creating a rule about uh, making sure that everything that comes into my joint savings account is connected to a goal of mine of for savings. Or um, see, so yeah, maybe I want everything that's coming in and out of this travel fund to be associated with my travel goal. I'm gonna do that. You can, you can mess with that there. So don't stress about rules. Just kind of set them up willy-nilly until you uh, have everything cleaned up. And if things go wrong, that is okay. We will be able to find them. We'll be able to delete them. Just uh, just use that rule tool to help you because if otherwise, if you go through every single transaction, you are going to pull your hair out. You're not going to like Monarch very much or, or me. So uh, use rules to help speed up the process. So... Uh, so that's your homework, get your get everything cleaned up. Um, if you have questions, if you feel like I went too quickly over things, if you feel like uh, you are unclear about uh, how to do this if for your specific situation, uh, please make sure you are subscribed to my newsletter for information on the other services that I offer to help you uh, answer your questions in more of a video format. I do my best with the comments. Like, please leave questions in the comments. I love it. But I'm sure a lot of you have been like, well, that's confusing and not as helpful. And that's because it's so hard to say it in writing. And maybe it's just so much easier in, uh, in a video. And so that's why we have, I have one-on-one -on -one sessions. We have Zoom calls, office hours, like we uh, I will get you, uh, you know, that assistance so you can ask that question. I can show you in your account and the demo account. I can show you how to do this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So make sure you subscribe to that newsletter um, so you can get the information on those services. Uh, and please still leave comments, questions, thoughts, uh, subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate it so much. So Thank you, and I will see you in the next part to continue this series on setting up your Monarch account.